All right. Um, so in this section, we're going to talk about the major types of unemployment, and there's three major types uh, of unemployment, frictional, structural, and cyclical. Okay. Uh, frictional unemployment is um, pretty much the, the good kind, or at least the okay kind of unemployment. It's the unemployment that results from the fact that workers have to search for appropriate job offers, right? So um, when people are looking for jobs, uh, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, and so in that amount of time, they remain temporarily unemployed. Um, but this by no means is a bad thing. It's just a fact of life that it takes time to find a job that is well suited uh, for the em employee. Okay, so friction, this is called frictional unemployment. It's just, it's called that because there's a little bit of friction in uh, job search, right, in the, in the labor market. So this, this is the uh, type of unemployment that's not really bad. Um, it's just the, the nature of, of how people look for jobs and find jobs. Um, then there is structural unemployment. Now this type of unemployment is, is not great, um, but there is sort of a good aspect to it, um, that I'll talk about, but this is when, um, uh, it's the type of unemployment, uh, over lengthy intervals that results from skill mismatches with, uh, position requirements of employees and employers, uh, from finding fewer jobs being offered by employers constrained by governmental business regulations and labor market policies. Um, that's a, that's a mouthful. Um, it's basically when there's some major change in our economy that leads people to be unemployed. So uh, an example of this would be um, when um, technology progressed to a point where we no longer needed telephone operators. It was something that could be, um, automated with um, technology, right? So there used to be telephone operators who would sit in rooms with cables and they would plug in uh, cables to connect callers to one another. Um, but technology got to a point where they were no longer needed. And so um, that's, a, that's a structural aspect of our economy, um, the nature in which it works. Um, and because of that structural change in the economy, those people that were telephone operators lost their job. So um, that's, that's an example of, of structural unemployment. Uh, another example might be, um, let's suppose that the government decided that, uh, that coal was really bad for the, for the environment. And so they banned coal, right? Well, a bunch of coal miners would lose their jobs um, and that would be another example of structural unemployment. Um, okay, so that's that's really what this slide is talking about with with regard to business regulations, governmental business regulations. Um, now, there's considerable evidence, empirical data evidence that shows that government labor market policies influence how many jobs businesses want to create, and therefore those regulations. The structural regulations uh, affect this type of unemployment, right? Um, so um, that's structural unemployment. So this is different from frictional, right? Which is people being unemployed just because it takes time to find a job, right? Normal stuff, nothing bad there. Um, structural unemployment isn't really great because it's, it's, it's a lot of times coming from government intervention. Although there are positive aspects of structural unemployment, like the telephone operator instance, right? Um, we were able to develop a technology where we no longer needed telephone operators, um, which in, in some way is a good thing, right? They, they can use their labor for other productive things and, and um, we no longer needed them for telephone operation. So there is a silver lining to that, that aspect of, of structural unemployment. Okay, so uh, let's think real quick about a, a what if situation. So what if the government required businesses to provide their employees with a wider range of benefits, such as broader health insurance and longer parental leave? So this is this is very topical, right? This is these are the types of policies that Bernie Sanders uh, is fighting for, right? Um, uh, Medicare for all and, and parental leave. Um, well, we have to think about what that might do to unemployment. So what would that do? So 
that would create higher expenses of employment for current and additional workers, right? Um, anybody that a business currently hires and anybody that they would hire in the future, it would be more expensive to hire them and, and employ them. Now, businesses are going to respond to this higher cost of, un, uh, of employment by cutting back on new job openings, and they may even reduce the number of existing workers by laying them off or firing them. Um, and the result of this would be some unemployment, and that unemployment would be structural unemployment, right? It's coming from uh, a business regulation. Okay. So I love Bernie Sanders, um, but his, his policies might, uh, might result in some higher structural unemployment if he were to get elected. All right, and then the third type of unemployment is, um, I guess it's, it's the, I don't know if I wanna say it's the bad, the worst type, but um, it's, in any case, it's the unemployment that results from business fluctuations, right? Uh, economic fluctuations. So recessions and, and booms. Um, and this type of unemployment can actually be negative when we're in an economic boom. Um, so that, that's interesting. Take note of that. Cyclical unemployment can be negative. Uh, the other two types cannot be negative. They're only ever positive. But cyclical unemployment can be negative when we're in an economic boom. Um, but this has to do, again, with the, the ups and downs of the economy. So when we're in a recession, some people lose their jobs and uh, they are unemployed. And they're not unemployed because they're looking for a job, although they probably will uh, start looking for a job soon after they lose theirs. They're not unemployed because of some business regulation or technological advance. Uh, they're unemployed simply because we are in a downturn. Okay, So that's uh, cyclical unemployment. All right. Another important concept we need to understand is this idea of full employment. Um, be careful here. It doesn't mean that everyone has a job that wants one. That's not what full employment is. Um, it's a it's a arbitrary level of unemployment that corresponds to normal friction in the labor market. OK, so um, basically the it's kind of, again, frictional unemployment is not really bad. It's just the normal result of people taking time to search for jobs. And that's, uh, that's directly related to this idea of full employment. It this full employment is the unemployment that corresponds to normal friction in the labor market. Um, and we call this, we call the, the rate, the unemployment rate associated with un uh, full employment we call that the natural rate of unemployment. So this is the unemployment rate that is estimated to prevail in the uh, long run in a macroeconomic equilibrium. Um, and it does not reflect cyclical unemployment. So the natural rate of unemployment, when we are at the natural rate of unemployment, cyclical unemployment is zero. Um, and when it's seasonally adjusted, it includes only frictional and structural unemployment. So again, uh, cyclical unemployment is zero when we're at the natural rate of unemployment. Um, and again, when we are at the natural rate of unemployment, we have full employment. Okay. All right, we'll wrap up this section with uh, one more example. So why a drop in routine jobs is elevating the natural rate of unemployment. Um, so the share of the labor force or the fraction of the labor force that's hired into routine jobs has dropped rapidly since 2000 as a result of automation with robots and apps. Um, people have also failed to upgrade their skills to be better prepared to handle non-routine jobs. So um, again, this is related to the gig economy with things like jobs like Uber and Lyft and, and uh, DoorDash and whatnot. Um, those are considered non-routine jobs. Um, and uh, there has been a mismatch between job seekers and non-routine job skills that results in a higher natural unemployment rate. Um, and this is mainly coming from um, frictional, uh, both frictional and uh, structural unemployment, right? So recall that the natural rate of unemployment, cyclical unemployment is zero. Uh, and it is only accounts for... Um, frictional and structural unemployment. All right, that concludes section two. I'll see you in the next video for section three.